welcome to Koinonia. Here at Great Bridge United Methodist Church, we welcome online and in-person community, lively spiritual conversation, and personal study and reflection so that we may give our hearts and our lives to God in order to transform the world and see to it that no one misses out on the grace of God. We know that the Word of God draws us closer to one another and that the study of God's Word is essential to our Christian walk. So let's open up our browsers and our Bibles and receive God's Word to us today. Friends, the good news comes to us this morning from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And in this, the sixth month for her, who has raised, who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would you pray with me? God of hope, you are my rock and my redeemer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. <clears throat> well, I hope you all had a very happy Thanksgiving. Mine was wonderful. My sister and her, and her two kids, my best friend with her husband and their two kids, all came to my house to celebrate Thanksgiving, my first Thanksgiving in my new house. And I was so excited when I heard that love was on the way, that they were on their way to my house and that they were going to be here soon. I had done a lot of cleaning and we had prepared all sorts of food ahead of time, but my friend Tierra cooked. And so I didn't have to cook, but I did have to clean up the mess. And boy, was there a mess. Five adults and four kids doesn't sound like a lot of people, but we tried to feed an army, and I think that we ran the dishwasher at least four times just on Thursday. But this was the best kind of mess, an ordinary, beautiful mess. 
And what's more ordinary and beautiful than birth? And yet it is the most consequential thing that has ever happened to, to any of us. That happened to each and every one of us. We celebrate it every year on our own birthdays, don't we? Each and every one of us was born. Each and every one of us had a mother who delivered us into this world, and yet pregnancy and birth are life-changing events. Isn't it incredible how the most ordinary things truly are extraordinary? Thanksgiving dinner with our family year in and year out. Ordinary and extraordinary. While not all of us here are mothers, all of us had a mother. And as we embark on this journey through Advent, we will be pondering Mary's experience with motherhood. Because all of us had a mother, even Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of a Virgin. Mary's experience was supernatural. None of our mothers that I know of had an angel appear to them to tell them that they were highly favored and that their child would, be the, would have a kingdom without end. And yet Mary also had the same ordinary feelings of surprise, excitement, fear, joy, confusion, nervousness. She probably had morning sickness. She was probably very tired. She felt her baby kick within her. She was a mother, just like all of our mothers. And yet God revealed to her a vision of hope. God called her to be the bearer of good news. In this message, she is given the great surprise of knowing that she will conceive, bear, and name the Messiah, the hope of the world, the Prince of Peace. And Mary asks just one simple question. How can this be, since I am a virgin? But I imagine that she also wondered, how can this be since my fiancé won't want to marry me? How can this be since I am nobody and my fiancé is just a carpenter? How can this be since I've never been a mother before and you want me to raise the son of God? How can this be? The angel's answer reveals to her a mystery which is that nothing is impossible with God. And Mary courageously says yes and agrees to be a part of God's extraordinary plan for the world. God has decided to enter the world in a way that joins God's holiness with the ordinary nature of humanity. But when we think about it, it was kind of a mess. It's hard to fathom how she must have felt. As Protestants, we don't always spend a lot of time contemplating Mary's experience. We often read this story rather quickly because we know it so well, but when we take the time to slow down and let it all sink in, what Mary does is more than a miraculous thing. It's more than life-changing. It's even more than world-changing, and it is indeed world-changing. But what Mary does is scandalous and dangerous. She must have been wondering what would her parents think? What would Joseph think? How would everyone she knows treat her? This wasn't just a shameful thing. This is the kind of thing that made a young girl worthless. This could have been a death sentence. And knowing all of this, she chooses to allow God to use her life. Isn't life today still full of messiness, danger, scandal, and uncertainty? I came across a poem by Madeline L. Ingle, which describes the birth of Christ into our messy world. She wrote, He did not wait until the world was ready. Till people and nations were at peace, he came when the heavens were unsteady, and prisoners cried out for release. He did not wait for the perfect time. 
He came when the need was great and deep. In the mystery of the word made flesh, the maker of the stars was born. We cannot wait until the world is sane to raise our song with joyful voice. For to share our grief, to touch our pain, he came with love. Rejoice, rejoice. Year after year, we gather to hear the story of Jesus' birth, even in a world that is not sane. We raise our song throughout Advent with joyful voice because although we know sorrow and despair and uncertainty, love has been birthed into the messiness of our world, right into the middle of it. The ordinary, normal, even boring events of everyday life run parallel to all that makes our world terrifying. The chapter in the devotional the staff is reading together for Advent discusses the way that God brings Christmas to us in the midst of all that is ordinary in our lives. Callis wrote that we ought to expect God's spirit to be manifest in the kitchen, the bedroom, the boardroom, and the classroom. I think sometimes we forget to look for God in all that is ordinary, but wonder where God is in the midst of mess and despair. We wake up like any other day, we go to work, we eat something, we run into Walmart to grab the last minute items for Thanksgiving, and the unthinkable happens. And then an ordinary day turns into a day that's unforgettable. What's devastating is the way that violence has become so commonplace. Violence has become so ordinary. Where was God in the midst of a mass shooting? Where was God during natural disasters or car accidents or times of war? Where was God in the moment when you felt your world was falling apart? And my friends, I have to tell you, the answer is the same on our worst days as on our best days. God is with us. God does not make or prevent these things from happening, but God stays with us in the midst of great pain and despair. On Wednesday morning, I woke up to a stream of messages from the staff here at GBUMC reporting the events of the mass shooting at, Great, at Walmart on Battlefield Boulevard. Someone asked, were any of our people hurt? They wanted to know, were all of you okay? And I'm very glad that you are. But aren't the seven people who died at Walmart on Tuesday night our people? Aren't they our neighbors? Don't we feel like we lost some of our own? In this time of tragedy that has shaken our own city, we must come together. We must be there for each other like Elizabeth was for Mary. We must show empathy and compassion. We must look for peace which rests in our hearts because we know that God is with us and that we believe in hope, love, resurrection, and redemption. This world isn't much different than the one in which Jesus was born. It was dangerous then, and it's dangerous now. And God did not promise that it wouldn't be. But God joined us in it, and God promised to be with us. God gives us people to endure this life together with this assurance that God is with us and that we are not alone. May we be able to, enabled by God's grace, to say yes. May we be empowered by God's spirit to participate in God's extraordinary plan for the world. As we wait for Christ's return, in final victory, let us step into Mary's life. Let us be as brave as she was. 
Let us conceive, bear, and name Jesus in our lives. We conceive Jesus when we allow God to use our lives. We bear Jesus when we spend time in prayer, reading scripture and pondering the ways God is moving in our lives. We name Jesus when our actions show his love and when we find opportunities to tell others about the way he has changed our lives. <clears throat> Let us remember that Advent is a gestation period, a pregnant pause in anticipation of birth. We are invited to slow down, hold space, and see what God is birthing in our midst. Let us remember that this is a journey. Let us wait and hope together. Love has come, and love is on the way. Amen. Amen.